What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new Liverpool transfer news video and finally Liverpool have been linked with another centre back who can also play right back, uh, Jurian Timber from Ajax has been linked by the Liverpool Echo to a transfer to Liverpool FC and I think this would be a perfect transfer because it, we could kill two birds with one stone having a player who could play centre back and right back similar to Joe Gomez and Julian Jurier Timber is a very talented young uh, Dutch centre back playing for Ajax. He's only 21 years old. His market value is around 35 million pounds. And according to Liverpool Echo, Liverpool are one of many clubs interested in Jurian Timber of Ajax uh, alongside Man United, Tottenham, Bayern Munich, Borussia Dortmund, Atletico Madrid, Marseille. These clubs are all in pursuit of Timber. Of course, uh, the links to Manchester United come because the manager Eric Ten Hag used to work with Timber at Ajax. But, uh, you know, Man United already bought his t former teammate uh, Lisandro Martinez, the World Cup winning Argentine centre back from Ajax for 57 million pounds. And earlier this, this month, Dutch television show host, uh, Dutch television show Verik Offside claimed that Timber's girlfriend was spotted in Liverpool looking for a house, house hunting basically, adding more value to the claims that Liverpool Liverpool's interest in the 21 year old centre back is genuine and also let me know in the comments below what is your score prediction ahead of the big West Ham United Liverpool game tonight. It's an absolutely massive game considering Liverpool's dreadful away from home and also West Ham are flying after scoring four in the Conference League and four in the Premier League against Bournemouth. Uh, so Liverpool have to be very very careful and very good defensively much better than we were against Nottingham Forest if we want to get a victory and with many teams uh, around us playing each other this could be another big opportunity for Liverpool to claw back uh, the gap that is between us and the top five top six clubs and you might think if you just see the age of Timber that he's a rookie center back but for a 21 year old he has an insane number of games he already played 155 games in uh, you know professional football he played one in his 16 games for Ajax and uh, also 15 games for the Dutch national team and he also played at the World Cup for the Netherlands and he already won the Eredivisie title twice so he is two-time league champion with Ajax in the 21 and 22 season he also won the Dutch Cup in 2021 and he also won the UEFA under 17 Euros with the Netherlands in 2018 and he was the Eredivisie player of the year in 22 and the talent of the year 2022 as well and he's also not an injury prone player playing on, playing on average around 40 games per season at Ajax and his versatility could prove to be a big asset a big value for uh, the Liverpool team going forward getting a player who is only 21 years old who can play center back and right back is very very valuable because if we want to rest Trenox Ronald, then he can slot in at right back. But if we want to rotate the centre backs, and I think either Matip or Gomez will leave Liverpool at the end of the season, so Timber could be the fourth choice centre back plus the backup right back all in one player and we save a bit of money by signing a center back who can play right back as well and with Liverpool having to spend a lot of money in midfielders this would be would be a very smart deal in my opinion and of course Julian Timber could move to another club uh, because uh, of uh, an interest in him from many clubs but he takes a lot of boxes at Liverpool and I really hope that we sign him because as I said he would be very very good and I Deal. and coming from Ajax he received a very good footballing education that's without saying he already played 42 games this season in all competitions he has one goal and two assists uh, but of course as a center back that's not his main like strength to score goals and get assists and Phil Thompson has uh, said some interesting things about why Liverpool could have struggled this season of course there are a multitude of reasons but one of the reasons has 
been you know the lack of uh, rest between last season and this season and also the incredible amount of games that we played last season 63 games in total if I remember correctly Phil Thompson said we have maybe suffered because last season we played every game that we could be could be played everything was depending on dependent on trend and Robertson getting up and down the pitch the close season was then too short and the preseason came too soon and it was too long and uh, it was shortened because of the World Cup. They didn't get enough rest. That has to be taken into account. So the rest was short. The preseason, I'm, I'm saying it was too long. I mean that we went to the Far East too early. We should have gone to a, a local preseason. And then when the players are up to speed, then we should have traveled. And that's what we will do uh, in the next preseason. The close season was then too short. And um, Jurgen's teams always play at a high intensity. If you play every game like that last season, you need your required rest more than ever. It is one of the few reasons for our full fall from form. And of course, uh, this uh, sh like shortened preseason and hectic preseason doesn't fully explain Liverpool's dreadful season this season. It's one of many reasons. The other is the lack of midfield reinforcements many top players be performing way below their standards, way below the expectations. And also you can't underestimate the psychological blow of, uh, you know, losing out on the quadruple by 15 minutes in the Premier League and by a heroic goalkeeping performance from Courtois in the Champions League final. And also traveling to the Far East wasn't the smartest idea from, uh, the, from the Liverpool team whoever organized the preseason schedule so this time Liverpool are trying to avoid the mistakes of the last preseason and this time they are changing their schedule what we know so far is that they will spend one week of a preseason in Jurgen Klopp's uh, home country Germany before going on another overseas tour and Jurgen Klopp has expressed his determination to avoid a repeat of last season's challenge of this season's challenges and uh, he wants to ensure that his team is ready for the new campaign it's completely no normal that um, we want to have a different preseason to last year you cannot compare it last season we went to all the finals and we played until the last day but i cannot tell the boys then two weeks and i will see you again for training that's just not possible so you have to squeeze each minute out but then we planned the preseason at that time who could know yes we can always think we are going to be in the champions league final but we have to plan it early and usually you have to plan without the champions league final because that doesn't happen constantly you just have to deal with it and this that is what we did we dealt with it but then we started in thailand and we pretty much playing immediately because we had to and then the boys came back step by step by step then it was never a perfect preseason but that is not the reason for our season now because before that we had similar pre-seasons but this year must be different so we now have already three four five weeks i don't know how long without international football usually you usually you play all the time now we play a lot i actually have no clue where they would have put in the champions league games if Liverpool had progressed to the semi-finals for example this season but it's different and that's why we have to step up we have to prepare that in the pre-season and that's why i want them back together as quick as somehow possible respecting the necessity of holidays i know that and i respect that and i want them to go on holiday for as long as possible but for this year we have to make sure we are together as soon as possible and we can go from there so maybe what happened is liverpool didn't anticipate getting to the champions league final and we already scheduled last uh, summer's pre-season tour before we qualified for the champions league final but still then Liverpool, you know, had had their hands tied behind their back because uh, we already scheduled the Far East Tour and then we qualified for the Champions League final so the season was a lot longer than normal and we already scheduled the games in Asia so we kind of couldn't cancel them. This season, uh, this pre-season will be different. We are going first to Germany for a mini pre-season and then we will go to, on a tour 
when the players are already up to speed fitness wise. And Liverpool's commercial director Ben Letty was speaking with the Liverpool Echo and he said that it has been the really successful period commercially the last 12 months. We don't apologize for the fact that we run Liverpool Football Club in a sustainable and responsible way. This is a really key part of it and we have to not only focus on adding but also making sure that the partners we have got are happy. That's so important to the business model that we have got. The last 12 months from a retail perspective have been really strong. We have really strong kit sales with Nike and our partnership has expanded and it's growing. It has been a really successful 12 months and we have to keep building on that. But on the pitch, it has been anything but a successful 12 months and Liverpool have to have a very strong transfer window with a lot of quality, borderline world-class players. We need at least two world-class midfielders. I can, I can understand if you sign one young midfielder, but two other world-class midfielders, those two needs to be able to walk into the starting lineup they need to be good enough to be that and also a center back who can play right back would make a lot of sense and i, I think if liverpool spend 150 or 200 million on these four players it wouldn't be break liverpool's uh, financial structure but it's absolutely necessary if Liverpool want to compete for uh, the Premier League and the Champions League next season. And before Liverpool won away at Leeds United, Liverpool haven't won an away game in all competitions for two months. Almost to the day, it was two months before we beat Leeds United, that we have beaten Newcastle. But after that we have drawn to Crystal Palace, lost to Bournemouth, lost to Real Madrid, lost to Man City and drawn, drawn to Chelsea. So Liverpool have to get this away hoodoo over with. And Liverpool lost to West Ham last season. I mean, uh, yeah, last season in the Premier League. But before that, Liverpool have won three out of four against West Ham. No, four out of five in uh, the Premier League against West Ham. So Liverpool overall have a good record lately against West Ham United. But last season that we lost to West Ham, that's a warning sign that Liverpool really need to turn up. And, uh, and win this time and uh, West Ham uh, you know they have been struggling but I think they are a little bit they have breathing space between them and Everton in the last place uh, that still gets relegated but West Ham still have work to do if they want to stay up and at home you know West Ham are usually very strong this season they already lost six games um, at home but Liverpool have lost <laughs> oh my goodness we have lost even more. We have lost eight games away from home. We lost half of our away games, which is absolutely crazy that we got 16 points from 16 games away from home. That's one of the worst uh, away records in Liverpool's Premier League history. I don't think we have seen a performance as bad as that from Liverpool in like 10, 15 years in the Premier League, maybe 10 years. But if Liverpool want to qualify for Europe, we absolutely have to get something. And if we want to make the top four, no question, we have to win every single game, starting uh, with uh, this West Ham game. But Liverpool already are on the two win uh, winning streak. And the last time we won three games in a row, it was actually before and after the World Cup break, we won four games in a row in the Premier League. That feels like ages ago. And I really want Thiago to start the game uh, against West Ham. And I also want to see maybe Luis Diaz for more than just 15 minutes, maybe half an hour. Diogo Jota and Mo Salah has to start and probably Cody Gakpo will start because of his great uh, high pressing uh, characteristic. Uh, it's quite weird that Darwin Nunez is uh, more on the bench but maybe he will get the start. Liverpool have to make some changes because we are playing three games in like seven or eight days. So Jurgen Klopp will have to make changes. Maybe Harvey, Eli Harvey Elliott will come in into the midfield. I don't really want to see Henderson in the midfield. I want Fabinho, Thiago and maybe Harvey Elliott in the midfield. But West Ham are a really tall, fast, physical side with Declan Rice in the midfield and Thomas Suchek. They have two very good physical, really tall midfielders. So Liverpool have to go strong in the midfield area as well. And West Ham are brimming, brimming with confidence. So Liverpool have to be very very strong defensively if we want to get a good result against West Ham. Apart from a few injured players like Calvin Ramsey, Bajetic, Nabi Keita and Bobby Firmino, 
Liverpool have a pretty much a full squad to choose from, so I think uh, it will be the usual like back four. I think uh, maybe Thiago will start alongside Curtis Jones and Fabinho. Curtis Jones has had uh, some really really good games lately, especially against Leeds United. He played really well, so I would start Curtis Jones for sure. Let me know what is your score prediction for the West Ham Liverpool game. I think a hard thought 2-1 Liverpool win is my prediction, but I hope that it will be a little bit more comfortable than that. But I expect a really, really tough game because, as I said, West Ham are flying and they are fighting for their lives to stay in the league. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.